Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1306. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1303 to 1306 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're actually continuing following up on the last two videos, 1305 and 1304. We're talking about this amazing formula element with the n if one and an array. However, in this video, we're going to see not the n function. We're going to see the t function, which helps us when we have an array of text items. Now, the beauty of both of these formula elements is that they allow us to get a function to return multiple items that would not ordinarily return multiple items, such as index and VLOOKUP. And the tricks with n if one and this t if one array are thanks to this blog right here and Xerlarium who posted this blog and also some tips that we're going to see. Now here's our problem. We have sales rep and region and then we have date sales, product sales. Well, of course, if we want a regional report to add up all of the sales for each one of our regions, east, midwest, southwest, we usually would add a helper column with VLOOKUP, and then we would use some ifs. Of course, we also might use the new power pivot data model and relationships. But what if we needed a formula down here and we were not allowed to use a helper column? Well, what would we do? We'd have to simulate this helper column inside our formula. Now, if we were simulating numbers, in the formula, it would be a little bit easier. We could use the sum ifs with some function argument array operation. But with text items, it's a little bit more tricky. Let's just first start off our formula and see if we can simulate and get this helper column inside our formula. I'm actually going to depend on the fact that the first column of our lookup table is sorted. And this is actually a formula I've done before. We can use the lookup function. Lookup function is simply amazing. It can handle array operations. It can do all sorts of things. So in the lookup value, I can simply highlight every single sales rep. Remember, that VLOOKUP formula right there is looking that up. But here in this array formula, Control Shift Down Arrow F4 to lock it, I want to tell lookup to look up every single sales rep to return every single region. Now, comma, I'm using the array down here. This is a two-column lookup table, F4 to lock it. Now, lookup only does approximate match. And so that's why this table has to be sorted. But lookup also doesn't need, like VLOOKUP, the second column and the zero or false for exact. Lookup will always retrieve the item from the last column. So if I close parentheses and highlight this in F9 to evaluate it, that's really an easy way to simulate a helper column when you are looking something up and the first column is sorted. Now Control Z, we could actually continue this because I need a series of trues and falses. So I'm going to come to the end and say, are any of you equal to east? Now I have my array of trues and falses, if I F9, that can help me get at the sales numbers. Control Z. I'm going to put this inside of some product, because I need to, in the first array, place all of the sales column. Control Shift down on F4. And now I'm in a comma. And some product doesn't understand trues and falses that the lookup is spitting out. So we need to convert these trues and falses to ones and zeros. And I'm going to do it with double negative open parentheses. That is an efficient way to convert trues and falses to ones and zeros inside of some product. If I F9, there's the ones and zeros. So now in some product, the product part will take array 1 times array 2. And only when it finds a 1 will it pick out the appropriate sales number for east. Now I'm going to Control Z. And then, of course, once it does the multiplying of these two arrays, then the sum part will add. Close parentheses and Control Enter. I don't have to use Control Shift Enter here. Double click and send it down. And sure enough, I get the same thing as if I had done sum ifs on a helper column. Now, the problem, of course, with this is, what if this was not sorted? So I'm going to sort one of the other columns. 
It's just not going to work. And in fact, I've been using this type of formula to simulate a relationship between two tables like we had a VLOOKUP helper column for years, but I've always been weary because what if the table wasn't sorted? Well, now, and I'm going to leave it like this. We'll undo it later. Now we can learn. Click here, and I'm going to start with VLOOKUP. And I'm going to pretend for a moment that I don't know these tricks. And I'm just going to assume that the lookup value would do the same thing as the lookup function. Control, Shift, Down, arrow, F4, comma, and then the table array. F4, comma, and then the column index number. I need to put a 2 for over here. 2, comma, false or 0 for exact match. But the problem with VLOOKUP, and actually in my Control, Shift, Enter, Mastering Excel Array Formulas book, I mentioned this is one of those arguments that can't handle array operations. If I highlight this and hit F9, it's just not going to work. And in fact, this blog here mentions that that's the problem with some functions when you're trying to return multiple items. Well, we're going to try to use this trick right here and wrap that function argument array operation inside of t and if. Now, in the last couple of videos, we used n, which works for numbers. But let's try the t function. If you read this here, checks whether a value is text and returns the text if it is, or returns double quotes empty text if it is not. So now I'm going to tab and then use if. Logical test, you put true or any non-zero number. So I'm going to put 1. Now I'm going to come very carefully to the end of this array of sales reps over here and close parentheses on the if and then close parentheses on the t. So now in the lookup value, if I F9, whoa, wait a second. It's not working. That's giving me a single sales rep. It should be the whole column. Control Z. Well, Excelarium posted that this formula needs something even crazier. We need to put array formula, array constant, curly brackets around the 1 to get this to work. Now you know why Microsoft Excel has never written a definitive book about array formulas, or for that matter, I certainly didn't write a definitive book either because there's just too many weird things. But watch this. When I hit F9, there they are. Now that is some crazy array formula magic. And if I take this one step further and highlight VLOOKUP in F9, there I have simulated this entire helper column. And guess what? The lookup table does not have to be sorted. Control Z. Now I can do the rest of my formula sum product. And in the first argument, I'm going to put all of my sales numbers, Control Shift down on F4, comma, double negative, open parentheses. And then I come to the end of the VLOOKUP and I say, hey, resultant array, are any of you equal to east? Close parentheses so that in the array two, I have that double negative working. And then close parentheses on the sum product. Control Enter. No Control Shift Enter. You don't see any curly brackets up there. Double click and send it down. And that formula is working. That very strange formula element with T if curly bracket array 1 is doing the magic for us. So I guess it is possible to simulate text values for a helper column in a lookup situation when we have exact match. Oh, man, I love hanging out on our online Excel team. you got to go check out this blog here. And thanks to Excelarium for this amazing trick. Now, I actually want to do one more thing in this video. Notice we did not have to use Control-Shift-Enter here. And I'm not sure why. But it looks like this right here is simply a range. Maybe that has something to do with it. Or this is array constant. I actually want to go back and look at our last video, Excel Magic 1305. And I want you to look at this formula. Now, this one we had to use. This one we used n, if, and 1. And we had to use Control, Shift, Enter. And I'm thinking maybe the match function, because it was spitting out multiple items. Maybe we had to, but again, this is kind of the mystery side of array formula. Sometimes we had to use our curly brackets up here. And if we go back to 1304, here was one where we used text join. Here, this might have an explanation why we didn't have to use Control Shift Enter. All of the 
array functions like mo.mult, frequency, line est, deliver an array of values. And when you put them in other functions, they don't require control shift enter, except for the transpose function. But yet again, there's another exception. Hey, but check this out. We, in 1304, did, used n, if, and 1. And then in 1305, we used n, if, and 1 twice inside of index and sum. And then finally, in this video, we used t, if, curly brackets to simulate a helper column of text values. Hey, all right, we'll see you next video.